what's good y'all it's your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna be checking out john cena in 2007 was untouchable now you're probably wondering all right this seems like a good video to check out but ross why do you have a robe on well it actually got cold down here in texas where i'm at in houston uh it's in uh, uh the the mid 40s right now just took out blondie to use the uh the restroom and i was like you know what i don't really wear this robe often uh, but it's comfortable it's warm you know it's keeping me warm right now and i don't feel like putting on anything else to record this video so yes i have on my comfortable robe during the video you know what i'm saying like it's we're, we're we're family at this point so i should be able to sometimes record some videos in my robe man just just to be comfortable and relaxed <laughs> so yes this is the fit for this particular video man but all jokes aside man john cena in 07 was uh he was just he vince said this is the guy and we're gonna go with the, him being the guy and we don't care what the fans think about it he's gonna be the guy so we're gonna check this out go down memory lane by none other than wrestling gifts make sure you subscribe to if you haven't already let's get right into this video man when it comes to sports, every all-time great athlete has that one year. <coughs> that one year where they're no doubt at their absolute best. The one year where they're at the top of their game and were straight untouchable. Looking back in history, Jordan had 1993, Tom Brady had 2007, Messi had 2012, and Ronaldo had 2013. These were the years where the athletes reached legendary status. And it's no different in the world of professional wrestling. Every wrestler has that one year that just becomes synonymous with them. Austin mm -hmm. had 1998, Triple H had 2000, Brock had 2000, 2002 and John Cena had 2007. John Cena in 2007 was just different. This man was on a mission. It was his third year carrying the WWE on his back and he carried that shit like his life depended on it. <laughs> Cena's 07 is one of the most impressive years by any top kind wrestling ever in my opinion. What John Cena did in 07, the streets will never ever forget. Once he dropped the Marine in late 06 and started saluting every two seconds and wearing camouflage, the game was changed. Cena in 07 had all eyes on him. This man had a whole generation convinced he was a part-time marine slash rapper slash trapper slash bad bitch snatcher and was the reigning <laughs> wwe champion the whole world was watching john cena and 2007 became his year it became the year where john cena officially became a legend we begin in January. To start off the year, Cena found himself in a feud against Umaga. The Samoan bulldozer Umaga was- Rest in peace, Umaga, man. Uh, they had a pretty pretty intense feud. I'm not going to lie to you. They had a pretty intense feud. Umaga definitely came off as a very viable threat genuinely terrifying as a kid i mean this man had face tattoos would give wrestlers concussions with his ass and then casually stab them in the throat with his thumb this man was truly a savage after finessing a win at new year's revolution cena had a rematch against umaga at the royal rumble a last man standing <laughs> match for the w yeah this was a good one and yo on that night these two went out there and they just went mental john cena in his early years before the wwe went pg was a god when it came to no dq matches this man would bleed for the industry and this match with umaga was no different they yep. killed each other umaga was destroying cena so bad it looked like cena was actually going to die announce tables were being broken monitors getting thrown around Steve this was snaps. a fun there match was more blood in this match than when it's your girl's time of the <laughs> this it was, was a fun a massacre, match man and it was awesome it looked like umaga had caught a body and there was no way cena would ever be able to put umaga out for the 10 count but after trying everything and anything after destroying the ring in the ringside area he resorted to doing this and he finally yep. did it after 30 minutes of Cena was that was a the that was a, a pretty cool visual them taking down a top turnbuckle and pretty much John Cena putting him in the uh at the time they still called it the STFU and just choking the life out of Umaga. That was a pretty cool visual. I'm not gonna lie to you. Him with the bloody crimson face. It, it was a, it was a different time in wrestling, man. The title and everyone knew right then and there that this was no doubt John Cena's greatest performance ever. Going into this show, everyone thought this match was going to be whatever. You know, just an average match, a random gimmick match. It was only Umaga's second pay-per-view main event ever, and the critics were very hard on Cena at this point, but it didn't matter. It ended up being the greatest last man standing match ever, and this was just the beginning of 07 Cena. I wouldn't say it's the greatest last man standing match ever, 
but it was definitely a good one. <laughs> I got to also remember that he's much younger, so his perception of what's the greatest ever is going to be different. I'm not one of those guys that be like, oh, back in my day in the Attitude Era. No, I'm not going to be that person because at the end of the day, someone growing up who really just watched more of the Ruthless Aggression Era, they're going to think a lot of those matches are the greatest era. The same thing with people who grew up in the Attitude Era. Same thing with people who grew up in the 80s and the 70s who thought those matches were the greatest era. That, uh, greatest ever. That's just what it is on the time period you grew up up on we can all coexist you know in different time periods of wrestling just put that out there for you guys the next two months were dedicated to building up the this WrestleMania was good too this was a John fun Cena match at Michaels. wrestlemania during the build we got a match straight out of spr 2007 where wrestlemania main event opponents had to team up the build up to wrestlemania was awesome and included nah, john wrestlemania cena 23 and was pretty Michaels good too i enjoyed, champions enjoyed every week. they were fighting each other yet at the same time they were defending the titles you know the typical but can they coexist? By the time we arrived in April of 2007, it was clear that Cena was reaching a new level, that this was going to be his defining run, and what John Cena pulled off in April just cemented him as one of the greatest of all time. Not for real, the shit that Cena pulled off in April of 07 needs to be studied in the history books. It was April 1st, it was WrestleMania 23, live from Detroit, Michigan, in front of 80,000 people. Cena drove into Ford Field in his Mustang, broke through that glass, and that six was a cool months entrance. into his run as champion, put on a banger of a match against Shawn Michaels. 28 minutes of them just going. No, they had a the good match. WrestleMania main event that told a great story and had so much drama. And at the end, Cena finally made Shawn Michaels tap out in the middle of the ring as 80,000 people went nuts. And yo, this was a great match. I remember watching this so many times as a kid when I had WrestleMania 23 on DVD. It had that big match feel. Dave Meltzer even gave it four stars. And to this day, it is still a universally loved match. No, and fun match. In, for many main eventing WrestleMania and having a classic match against Shawn Michaels would definitely be the highlight of their year you know let alone their career for Cena in 07 it wasn't even the highlight of his month they had they had a good series of matches on Monday Night it Raw, too. It was just the beginning because three weeks later, they ran the match back. It was Monday Night Raw mm -hmm. from London, England. Yep, it was, I was John just Cena thinking about this Shawn match. Michaels one on one, one more time. And it was like, okay, you know what? This is going to be like any other Raw match. Maybe nah. someone will interfere. Maybe there'll be a disqualification. There will at least be some sort of angle. Nah, in this they match. showed out. Something will go down, right? Yo, the only thing that went down was them casually having the greatest match in Raw history. Just three weeks after main eventing WrestleMania, nah, they, put on they a ran clinic. the match back and had a 55-minute match on Raw. A match that many considered to be even better than their WrestleMania yep. main event. This is no doubt the best TV match I've ever seen live in my life. It really felt like you were watching a playoff baseball game in extra innings and that at any moment someone was going to walk up to the plate and boom, a walk-off home run was going to end it. They wrestled for 55 minutes and at the end... Yeah. Sean finally crazy. won with the clutch sweet chin music where he just fell on scene after hitting it and one, two, three, it was over. John Cena at this point was battling you can't wrestle allegations at the time. John Cena was looked at as a fraud by so many of the fans and he just pulled up like that scene in Gladiator and was like, Are you not entertained? <laughs> That wasn't all for April. A WrestleMania classic plus the best Raw match of all time wasn't enough because just six days later, we got this. John Cena versus Shawn Michaels versus Edge versus Randy mm -hmm. Orton for the WWE I forgot title about Backlash that. 2007. I forgot four about that, man. Four of the biggest stars of all time. Four of the guys who defined their childhoods in one match for the title. John Cena's 200-day reign on the line. It, it doesn't get better than this. You had Jim Ross losing his mind on commentary. <laughs> so many close calls. So I forgot all movies. about was this fatal four way. everywhere. And one of the best endings I've ever seen for any wrestling match. After Cena wipes out rated RKO, he turns around and boom, sweet chin music. HBK falls down after hitting the kick, but the kick ends up having Cena land on Orton. That's... And even though Cena was unconscious, he got the one. <laughs> That's two, so three. crazy, three bro. Bangers, Three classics in one month, I am telling you. I ain't going to oh. hold you, man. John Cena had some good matches. I, good, uh, Granted, you know, some people would say, oh, he got carried. Whatever situation, whatever you want to call it. He was a part of some good matches. 
he's always been a part of some pretty good, pretty fun matches. I will never take that away from him. I know this time period, fans, majority of the, the male audience weren't really feeling him, you know. But at this point, he was moving merchandise. The kids love him. The women love him. That's really all Vince cared about is that bottom dollar, honestly. So. 07 John Cena was special. He was special. <laughs> Fucking Vince. <laughs> oh, brother. <laughs> As the months went by, the run just got even more godly. In May and June, John Cena was stuck in a feud with a great colleague. Followed oh, by 07 yeah. could barely move. His knees were more done than Derrick Rose's knees. He had been in the company for over a year and had yet to have one decent match. But he ends up in a feud with John Cena, and yo, I swear to God, Cena gave the great Kali the two best matches of his career. Yo, just think how fucking mental that is that John Cena somehow, someway in 07 <laughs> made a feud with the great Kali work. And, and let's be real, the ending of the second match where he lifted Kali for the FU and dropped him off the crane is an insane moment. But that's yeah, what nah, made that is a pretty cool Cena spot. Such a go. It didn't matter what the, Damn. Was, what the show was. It didn't matter. Who remember was... one night stand as a pay per view? Bring it back. Bring Get back. <laughs> the ring against the legend of Shawn Michaels, or he was in a last man standing match with Umaga. It didn't matter if he was in the ring against someone who couldn't move. It didn't matter if it was a tag team match, a fatal four way, a fatal five way. Every single night, Cena was out there putting in work, and this was John Cena in his 1989 Ric Flair bag. When the lights were on bright, when it was time, the true main eventer came out every single night and made sure that the fans got their money worth. And in July, he was up against Bobby Lashley in the main event of the oh, Great American Bash. Oh, I think I do this remember Bobby this. Lashley that is very different than the one that we know these days. This was a Bobby Lashley who had never main evented a pay-per-view prior to this. This was a Lashley who had just been wrestling for a little over two years. And once again, Cena went out there as the WWE Champion in the main event with the company on his back just weeks after the Benoit tragedy. They had all this bad press on the WWE. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. After an awesome powerhouse big time main event a match that honestly certified bobby lashley as the real deal he hit bobby with a top rope fu and retained his title and it, he just proved it bring back the great american bash too as well it didn't matter who his opponent was john cena was going to deliver every pay-per-view cena was main eventing and cena was defending there were no off nights he was on raw he was even on smackdown every now and then he was on saturday night's main event he just simply was the man and oh no nah, he was, was definitely it was such he was definitely putting in work fan. for like, sure respect to roman reigns and what he's been doing for the past two years but yo when i look back at what cena was doing every single week this guy was just a different breed. And his final feud of 07 began in August. Three years after they first interacted on screen, five years from the debut, we finally got the John Cena vs. Randy Orton feud. The SmackDown vs. Raw intro video from 2004 was finally coming to life. Cena had been champion for 11 months, the longest reign in two decades in the WWE, and it was going to be on the line for the first time ever against Randy Orton at SummerSlam 07. I remember this match like it was yesterday. I begged my parents to <laughs> the show on I begged them like, please, can you spend your $40? Because I need to see Cena beat Randy Orton. I had all my friends over, I had all my cousins over, and all like 10 of us were cheering for Cena. And this main event was so electric, it was so captivating, it was such a simple but awesome match. I'll never forget when Randy hit him with the RKO and everyone's heart just dropped like, oh, mm -hmm. this is it, it's over, the, the year reign is over. But nah, Cena one last time came through and hit him with the FU out of nowhere <laughs> and walked out of SummerSlam 07, still the WWE Champion. I'll never forget that night, me and my friends and my family just bonding over the fact that John Cena came clutch. There was no better feeling than seeing Cena retain. I didn't know anybody that was a wrestling fan at this time, anyone that was my age that wasn't a John Cena fan. By September and October of 07, his feud with Randy Orton was just getting hotter and yep. hotter. It eventually became a blood feud which included yeah. Cena getting disqualified and unforgiven, oh, Orton that... handcuffing Cena to the ring and beating his- This is when Randy went to that special place and all oh, that. I enjoyed this feud. Once his- he involved his dad into it. I was like, oh, yeah, this is this is good. I love this. Dad's ass in front of him. And it was all going to lead to one final encounter. No mercy. Cena versus Orin 
Last, last man, man standing. standing. There was so much hype going into this match. No Mercy was definitely going to be bought on pay-per-view. This was such a special feeling. Like, yo, Cena's been champion for over a year. He's had this crazy run in 07 that even as kids, we knew, like, yo, we were watching something special. And now it was going to be his toughest test. It was going to be against his menace. It was going to be against Randy Orton in a match where there are no rules. But we never got it. Cena's amazing yeah. title run and his legendary 07 run ended a week before No Mercy due to injury. Yep, he I was forgot champion about that. for 380 days and it ended due to a shoulder injury. Yeah, I, I forgot lying, about that. But yeah. I'm telling you, this was the saddest day of my yeah. nine year old life. One of the greatest runs of all time. I legit forgot about that because he did get injured. He, he ended up getting injured and uh, yeah, it never happened. So. And ending due to injury. John Cena in 2007 was just different. Yeah, this whole run vacated. holds a special place in my heart because John Cena was my guy. He was always my guy. And witnessing this run from beginning to end was just special. And even looking back at it, the things he was able to do against some of the talent he was up against, the work that he put in, it was legendary. This was the year that Cena truly became the man. In 05, he had a great run when he first became champion, but they protected him. You know, he was up against like Jericho and Angle, and in 06, he was most Mostly chasing the belt but 07 was when he became the guy this was when they gave him the belt and said yo be our Ric Flair pretend this is the 90s and just carry this damn territory and did he ever no doubt one of the most impressive calendar years a wrestler has ever had one of the best title reigns ever and I'm so glad that I got to witness this live but yeah John Cena in 07 was just different truly one of the greatest of all time and what a year it was to be alive in the comments down <laughs> below, let me know your... Hey, man. This is one of those type of situations where, I, you know, obviously I watched this. Um, this is when I was still in into, you know, watching wrestling and stuff like that. And I didn't have a problem with John. I understood the criticisms. But hearing it from a perspective of someone much younger than me or younger than me growing up watching the, ad uh, the Ruthless Aggression era, I can appreciate it because it, it reminds me of how I felt watching the rock and stone cold as i was growing up so this is why it's i check these videos out like this because one i did watch this era of john cena and two i can appreciate when there's a star that brings in younger fans to want to be a part of the wrestling culture that's the whole purpose is to be able to bring in new younger fans so that way the love for wrestling will never die like, we have people now that love Roman Reigns. They loved him when he was considered the big dog. So they love Roman Reigns. And they got into wrestling because of Roman Reigns. He is the next big star in the wrestling industry. And I, I love to see that. It's, it's very cool. And this is what the wrestling community should be all about. It should be all about us being able to bring in some of these newer fans to be able to enjoy wrestling like we do you know yeah it's gonna be a lot different from how we grew up but we can always just we should be able to appreciate what we see in front of us even if we're not the biggest fans of it there's a kid out there that loves it there's no one out there that now they're checking out older wrestling clips or maybe they become fans of some of our our legends some of our goats that we consider great like stone colds and the rocks and stuff like that you can check out all these footages you know on youtube or just online you know what i'm saying so this was a cool video man john cena during that time he he definitely put the company on his back and uh he never looked back so comment down below let me know what's your favorite john cena match of all time if i have to think it's not even hard for me <laughs> john cena cm punk money in the bank 2011 it's the it's the feud that bought me, brought me back to wrestling. That match is a five-star classic. Five-star classic. The only thing I'm not a big... Ooh, the only downside to that match is they tried to do the Montreal screw job finish at the end. It, it was kind of forced. They didn't have to do all of that. But at the same time, it's still a five-star classic. That atmosphere was just relentless. The feud itself between John Cena and CM Punk was great. The story behind the feud, will, if CM Punk wins, will he leave and never come back? Like, there's so many things that made that match what it was. It was, in my opinion, the best John Cena match. The best match he's ever put on is with CM Punk 
in 2011 at Money in the Bank, baby. But that's just my favorite match. Let me know your favorite match from him down below in the comment section. But I appreciate all the love and support. Road to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace. I like my little road, man. I like it.